In this problem, we want to do what we did in the previous problem. We want to look at the alkyl halide. If it's primary, we're going to draw uh, SN2 products. And remember, we look at uh, stereochemistry. And we, we basically invert the stereochemistry if it's SN2. Okay. Uh, if it's tertiary, we know it must be SN1. And we draw the uh, racemic reaction products. That means both. Now, if it's secondary, it could be SN2 or SN1, okay? And we discussed how uh, it could be SN2 with a strong negatively charged nucleophile or, and or a polar aprotic solvent, okay? And in the case of SN1, now again, we only deal with this intricacy when we have a secondary alkyl halide, okay? And to decide if it's SN1, we're going to be looking for a neutral nucleophile, like a solvent, and something that's polar uh, parotic, like uh, water or uh, ethanol or methanol, something like that, okay? So let's go draw these products here, okay? So we look at this molecule here, and we can see that it's a secondary alkyl halide, okay? So it could be either SN1 or SN2. So we look at the structure of the nucleophile. It's negatively charged and DMSO is a polar A protic solvent. So this is going to be SN2. Now that we figured that out, we know that uh, we're supposed to invert the stereochemistry. So we replace that chlorine for a bromide, and we use the uh, dash there, okay? Now, when you're doing this, remember that NABR, ditch the Na, is a source of bromide, which is going to be your nucleophile, okay? In part B, we have a primary alkyl halide. There's no stereochemistry. This is going to be SN2, so we just draw the substitution products, okay? In this case here, we have a tertiary, okay? So here's the alpha. It's kind of hard to count here, but there's one, two, three carbons attached so therefore, it must be an SM1 reaction, which gives us racemic reaction products. So we draw two molecules here, one where the uh, chlorine is replaced for a bromine, and the other molecule with uh, that situation reversed. Okay. So that's what we do there. Okay, in part D, this is a tertiary alkyl halide. We know that's going to be SN1, and so we draw the reaction products here. There's no stereochemistry, so we don't need to worry about that there, okay? In E, there is stereochemistry. It's secondary, so what do we do? Well, we look at the nucleophile, it's neutral, and we look at the solvent, it's polar protic. So this is going to proceed by SN1. The stereochemistry means that we're going to draw the racemic product. Okay, that way it could come in from the same or opposite direction. Here, this is an SN2 reaction. Well, let's analyze this. Here's the alpha carbon, and it's connected to only one carbon. So this is primary, it's SN2. Okay, D is deuterium. In case uh, you're seeing that for the first time in this video, and H is just hydrogen. So D is just like uh, hydrogen, but it's an isotope. Now, this is going to be um, an inversion of configuration because there's stereochemistry here. And there's two ways to draw the enantiomer, okay? If you draw the cyanide with the same orientation as the bromine, you've got to reverse these two groups, okay? Remember your stereochemistry. You reverse any two groups to make the enantiomer. Okay, I've just chosen the hydrogen and deuterium to reverse. Okay, whatever you draw, go through the R and S and make sure you have the correct compound, okay? In G, we have a primary alkyl halide. So that's gonna be SN2. There's no stereochemistry. Here's the nucleophile. So we just snap it in there, okay? Here, we have an alkyl halide that's secondary, okay? 
There's no stereochemistry, but it, it proceeds by SN1 because this is a polar product solvent. And so the products here are just going to be OCH3, okay, and some acid. Now, in this problem, we have a secondary alkyl halide. We have a strong nucleophile because it's negatively charged. And we have DMSO, which is a polar A product solvent. So that proceeds by SN2. There's inversion of configuration, but only at the alpha carbon. Okay, so when you draw this uh, molecule here, the methyl group, there's no bond formation to this uh, methyl group. So that stays on a wedge, but because the bromide is attacking from the opposite side as a leaving group, it's this alpha carbon that switched. So you might make note of that. You don't reverse every single carbon in a humongous molecule just where there's bond formation and bond breaking occurring. In this next molecule, we have a tertiary alkyl halide, which means it's going to be SN1. Here's our nucleophile. So what we're going to do is replace the bromine for a chlorine. There's no stereochemistry, so we don't need to worry about wedges and dashes. Same thing here, no stereochemistry. This is primary, so this proceeds by SN2. Here's our nucleophile. So all we need to do is replace that BR with a CN group. Okay. This molecule here is quite a bit intricate. It's a secondary alkyl halide, which means it's going to proceed by SN2, which means we need to invert the stereochemistry of just this chlorine. Okay. So the OH is going to attack from the back side, giving us a molecule. So this methyl stays. This methyl stays. All right. But what's different is this alpha carbon the OH comes in from the reverse side, okay? Um, that summarizes this. It's a lot of work, uh, but I hope you saw how I went through the procedure here in green on the left to decide SN1, SN2, and then what to do with the stereochemistry. Thanks for watching, and please do consider subscribing to my channel.